All right. All right. Welcome back, everybody. We're so excited to be here with you today. And man, what an awesome day we have. Miss Jane Noel is going to be sharing with her. I tell you, this woman is, she is quiet, but she is a, there is just a lion inside of her. She's just so powerful. I love to hear her speak, share her story and her testimonies. And we've just watched so much of her blossom, <laughs> you know, and I'm so proud of her and how she is continuing to move and just be faithful in God and hearing God's voice, listening to his voice and, and moving by his voice. So amen, Miss Jane, go ahead and take it away, ma'am. Well, thank you, Jacinta, for all the kind words. Mm -hmm. Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm a little nervous, but I'm, I'm going to try to get through this without my nerves taking over. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking in the, or I'm going to be reading from the uh, book of Philippians, and I'm going to be in the ESV version. And uh, let's see, I want to read a little something that I found on the uh, internet this morning about Paul and his letters to the churches. Uh, some of this is from my, uh, I got from my pastor this past week. I thought he did an awesome job and I wanted to share some of it with you all. And some of it is what I uh, looked up on, on my own. It says, Paul's letters to the churches were written over a period of 14 years. I didn't know that. To seven churches scattered throughout Asia, Minor, Greece, and Rome. Philippians, this letter includes Thanks for financial assistance, along with his personal news and exhortations, uh, the church of Philip, wait a minute, Philippi, is that how you say it? Okay, Philippi, appears to be Paul's favorite, and the letter to the Philippians is thus the most personal of any that he wrote to the church. Here's how we define the spiritual gift of exhortation. Exhorters see the silver lining in every cloud offer deep and inspiring hope to the community and look for the best in everyone. Now I read that everyone there loved Paul and he loved everyone. So in the Paul's letters to the church in Philippi, the apostle Paul uses the Greek words of joy and rejoicing. It's uh, in there 16 times in over 14 verses. This was his attitude while in prison rejoicing in every circumstance and um, let's see and finding joy amidst trials in a, is a major theme he was in the roman custody uh while he was in jail his letter ladder out of the pair of despair in philippians 2 5 and 11 in the scv i'm going to go there let's see Let's see, and it says, have, the, have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Jesus Christ, who, through he, though he was in the form of God, did not count the seed. I'm sorry, I lost my place here. Though he was in form of, uh, in form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied See, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of man and being found in human form. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even on the cross. Therefore, uh, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that the name of Jesus every knee shall bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The focus here who is Jesus, who Jesus is and what he's done. Unfortunately, when we're in the pits of despair, we focus on what we've done and not on Jesus. Let's see, our hope is see, our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I know that that I've done that in the past when when I'm going through some trials, 
uh, in my past, instead of uh, letting Jesus carry the burden, I was trying to carry it all myself. And But I'm getting better on that. Uh, I'm trying to give everything to him so that I won't have to have to deal with it and be put under the stress that, you know, the burdens can put on you because that's not good for our health. Okay, our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. And if that's true, and I do believe that it is, then we can do, see, we can do something. And that's what I'm learning hard, the hard way. I'm learning how to rest. I uh, I was always the type that would like carry the burden myself for everyone. And we all know how stressful that is, you know, but I'm, I'm learning how, like I said, how to, to give the troubles over to God and let him fight the battles for me. But how do you fight for joy when time moves so fast? In Philippians 3.13 ESV, let's see what that says. Okay, brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. There is a difference between looking back at the past with grief or looking back with gratitude. If we look back and all we have is grief, then we're doing it wrong. But if I look back, but if we look back and we take that as an opportunity to express our gratitude, that can fuel us for moving forward. I believe this is why Paul had joy even in prison. Now, I can't imagine having feeling joy while I was in prison. <laughs> but, but now that, that doesn't mean that everyone has, see, that doesn't mean that everything that's happened to us nor to Paul was good. But it does mean this, you're still here. He was standing beside you, guiding you the whole way through. God is faithful, so we should look back with gratitude for what Jesus has done for us and for what he's doing in our lives right now. But then it's time for us to uh, put one foot in front of the other and move forward and press on towards our goal. Now, we know if we look at this in the Primerica, uh, as Primericans, we think, well, you know, we stumble, we come across things that we stumble on. We, you know, we get uh, chargebacks or we get um, uh, a cold, ha cold house or a dark house, whatever you want to call it. Or, you know, people, they, they act like they're excited to come on board. And then when it's uh, time to get them in the system or whatever, they go MIA on you. I know I've had that happen. And it's like, well, you know, just like Don said, are, are you the one or should we move on forward to find the, find, find someone else? And that's that's the way I'm looking at it now, too. You know, like Jacinta said, we can't get caught up in, in the negative things and work. We got to keep on moving, keep on pressing. Let's see. I want to share these words with you from C.S. Lewis. There are far better things ahead than what we leave behind. And that is truly that is true because of Jesus. And if we believe that we can trust that our sadness can be replaced with joy and looking ahead is what one of the reasons people, let's see, looking ahead is uh, what we do on this call and we still do it. One of the reasons people struggle with sadness and, ex and experience so little joy is they're not joining Jesus in everything. The people that I know who have joy are spending their lives on uh, joining Jesus and his mission. They focus their attention on other people. The people that I know who have very little joy or, no, or to no joy spend their time just focused on themselves. I'm learning to treasure the good days because in this world now, there is a lot of darkness all around us. I'm learning to choose things that don't threaten my joy. I like to choose things that fuel that fuel my joy in Philippians 4, 11 and 13. And that again is in the SEV.
Okay, let's say as uh, not that I'm speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low and I know how to abound in any and every circumstance. I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. That's one of my favorite verses, by the way. Paul's joy was not dependent on his circumstances. His joy was dependent on a person who has proven himself faithful time and time again. Paul went through some crazy stuff. In 2 Corinthians, let's see. Second Corinthians 11, 23 through 28. And that, again, is in the ESV. Okay, it says, Are they servants of Christ? I am a better one. I am talking like a madman. With far greater labors, far more imprisonments, with countless beatings, and often near death. Five times I received at the hands of the Jews the forty lashes less one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned three times. Let's see, once I was stoned, and then three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I was adrift at sea. On frequent journeys, in danger from rivers, danger from robbers, danger from my own people, danger from Gentiles, danger in the city, danger in the wilderness, danger at sea, danger from false brothers, in toil and hardship, through many a sleepless night, in hunger and thirst, often without food, in code and exposure, and apart from other things, there is the daily pressure on me and my anxiety for all of the churches. And yet at the end of Paul's life, in prison, yet again, this time being held by someone who supposedly supposedly was the most powerful man on the planet on this planet and that was Caesar he's telling us today the church and us on the this accelerate tribe uh, rejoice in the Lord always that was in Philippians 4:14. okay and now I want to say something that's, uh, this is going on, what's going on in Israel right now, if I can. Um, in the middle of all this sadness and in the middle of all the pain that they are going through, there's this solid rock reality that goes like this. Jesus wins. In the end, Jesus is going to win. He triumphs over sin, Satan, and death. That's ultimately where all this is headed because of the cross and the empty grave. And here's the cool part. He gives us these gracious glimpses into the fact, not only does he win, but he actually, in spite of all that we've seen and experienced, let's see, in our world today, he is actually winning right now. At the end of Paul's letter to the people in Philippi, in uh, Philippians 4.22 in the ESV version. Let me see. I should have wrote these down. I'm sorry. Hey, Jane, I missed the one in 2 Corinthians. What was that 2 Corinthians that you read uh, earlier? 2 Corinthians. It was 11.23 through 28. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Let's see. Oh, I got the wrong one here. I'm sorry. Uh, let's see.
I'm sorry, keep y'all waiting. It says, all the saints greet you, especially those of Caesar's household. Well, how about that, Caesar? Though he thought he was God, well, our God God showed him. He was, he was there. <laughs> Whatever you're going through right now, you can find joy in the Lord. Not because of what you're going through, but because he's going through it with you. Some someone at our church wrote this uh, song, and I want to share a verse with you that, that I thought it just goes so well with what I'm saying. It says, uh, "When our fear has stolen our peace, and our pain seems too much to bear, when it feels like we are forsaken, Jesus, you are always there. When our failure leads to the to the cross, and our hope was fading away." The enemy's plan was defeated when you rose from the grave. And I just thought, I just love that verse there. I just love it. But anyway, I'm so sorry, you all, but this was short and sweet, but I hope that it touched somebody. And this is all I have today. <laughs> Very good, honey. Don't apologize. It was great. It doesn't, you know, the, the, there's power in every single thing that you shared today. Um, you know, I, I I loved what you said about how do you fight for joy? Um, because that is a choice. It is a choice. And it is an active thing that we must do to choose to be joyful and choose to rejoice. Um, you know, and that's 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 huge in our walk with God and how in our maturity with God our spiritual maturity, a lot of, of it is indicated by the different choices that we make and the times that we choose to believe God and how we work with ourselves and bow our will down to stay in alignment with his word and to keep our mind and emotions in alignment with his word, that that is really a, 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 a again the indication of how we are maturing spiritually so um you know I thought that was a really great point to bring out for one um but I'm going to yield the floor let's see uh go ahead Pastor Don well praise the Lord amen um uh to God be the glory and uh Jane you know what you you always talk about my nerves and all this kind of stuff. <laughs> I don't know why you say that because what when, when you open your mouth, it's a blessing. So to God be the glory. But what what I what I love and, uh, about what you said is that you know God is with us through the tough times. Mm -hmm. He's with us, and and just like we talked about on on yesterday, and that that is that is the greatest thing that we can hold on to that that wherever we are you know um you know he yeah he's he's filled us with his with his power with his spirit okay but the greatest thing is that <laughs> he's with us that's right. the greatest thing not that we can command the the devils you know just like we talked about yesterday but today it's one of when we're faced with situations see life continues to go on sometimes life is not fair so there there guess what there's some mean folk out there. There's some evil folk out there. Yeah, that, but guess what? We win because Christ is in our lives. We win. Jesus always wins. Glory to God. Jesus is always there because he promised that. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. So when we take all of these into our spirit and we apply it to any and every aspect of our lives yes yes who yes who wins yes who will be victorious yes who won't be uh moved by uh what other people may say or do or not say or not do or go m i m i a or you receive a charge back and all this kind of stuff there to god be the glory guess what i win <laughs> Hallelujah. And that's all I got to say about that, at least for right now. To God be the glory. Amen. 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 Go ahead, Miss Lakita. 
All right. Praise God. Good morning, tribe. Miss um, Jane, you said three things that stood out to me and praise God, you do so well. But you know what? I know we all critique ourselves, but honey, you are doing great. The, the first thing you said was joy and rejoicing. And I'm telling you, like my heart just flutters because that's what we show up to every morning when we hop on this call. Just such a joy, you know, being in the presence of the Lord at all times and just rejoicing. And that's really peace, you know, that's peace in, yes. in the Lord and just being able for us to just show up and just rejoice. And when we do that intentionally every day, then guess what? That's our norm. That's our normal. God is who we seek first through all those things. And then I love the second thing that you said, we focus on what we've done and not on Jesus. And again, that's peace, right? And that's so true. And that's what I love what we've been doing in our assignments through the Celebrate Call personally on this journey is that we're backing off of the things that we've done and just keeping our eyes focused on Jesus. And he takes care of everything. And it and is such a beautiful reflection also in our business that we understand that there are going to be times that we're going to set before people or make phone calls, get names and numbers, make phone calls, and they don't call us back. That's all right. You know what? Because we in a posture of joy and rejoicing. Yeah, we don't have to focus on you just as long as we focus on Jesus. He's going to take care of everything. And Jacinta talked about that yesterday. You know, in our wheel, when we're trying to do it all on our own, it's about one or two people that we're going to you know, touch and reach, but knowing that when we go out to that upper room and look into him, those numbers start to increase. We go into the 120s and then all of a sudden we're reaching out more to the 3000 and the masses. Why? Because the spirit of the Lord has taken swiftly over in us, you know, doing the work. So I love that. And the third thing, queen, honey, the solid rock reality. Ooh, I love the way it sounds, right? And it's true. If we stand on his firm foundation and know that we can do all things through him, you said it in Philippians 4, right? All things through him that strengthen us, nothing can, can hit us. And then he puts it in the word in 2 Corinthians. I don't recall um, reading through that, that type of pain, but I will tell you one time the Lord has shared with me, I was sulking in something. And I mean, I was feeling down. I was feeling heavy. And I remember the Lord telling me how you feel. I take that on a thousand times more because that's what I took to the cross. So stop feeling that way. Repent, come out of that. And when he told me that I was like, oh my goodness. And then the thing is that feeling, that's not even the nails that were what nailed them to the cross. The blood that shed, he did all that. He took all that away from us. So yes, we should stay in that posture of joy and rejoicing. So mm -hmm. thank you for your word. It spoke to me, spoke in my spirit. It fluttered. God is here. His presence is here. So thank you for your word. Thank you. Amen. Awesome. Awesome. There's like, there's the new standard now. If Lakita's spirit is fluttering, then... <laughs> <laughs> we know we know we're on track <laughs> amen 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 man um all right anybody else have anything they want to share you want to add yes. oh, go ahead. oh okay myra go ahead yes uh well praise the lord everybody uh jane i do appreciate this message from god the first scripture you read Philippians 2, 5, and 11 is one of my favorite scriptures. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. Because it talks to us about Jesus. Mm -hmm. Thank the Lord. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it always, and it says, he humbled himself, praise God, having this man among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God, a mm -hmm. thing to be grass. That has always blessed me, uh, church, because, you know, in the flesh, it's so easy um, to take, make something your own mm -hmm. and to feel like you're more than what you, what God has made you to be. 
-hmm. But I love the scripture because Jesus being God, himself in the flesh, he didn't pump himself up and he was not in pride, but he humbled himself. And this has always been one of my favorite scriptures to remind me, praise God, regardless what God is doing and the joy that he gives us and the peace and the love, uh, don't be puffed up about it, but take mm -hmm. the spirit of gratitude and, and be humble and thankful to God and always praising him. Oh my God, because he allowed us as mere humans to have his spirit that he entrusts in us to do the right thing. So this word is so great. And you're not the only one have anxiety when you speak out of two, um, <laughs> always, you know, uh, but Oh God, we know that God has a word for all of us through all of us. And I thank God for every nugget that everyone gives over the call. And I especially thank God and I'm going to get off of here, but I especially thank God for uh, what he's given us through you, Jacinta. I do. Mm -hmm. um, oh God, God woke me up for four o'clock this morning church and um, with this message. And I'd like to say one thing, see mm -hmm. that I shine. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. That what God brought to me this morning, four o'clock this morning, church, was that he has given, and Jacinta, I know you're humble, and to God be all the glory, and I'm not trying to puff you up, but what he showed me when he woke me up was that um, he's using you, oh God, like he used Moses, praise God, when he had taken, um, oh, the children of Israel, he gave them the instruction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And every day, sometimes it leaves me speechless as God speak through you because church, he's given us instructions like Moses gave Joshua and Caleb mm -hmm. for the children to go to the promised land. And he's, he, Lord, mm -hmm. my God, he's given us instructions. Oh my God. Oh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How to go through to our promised land in this business. And oh, my mm -hmm. God, I'm just praying that he would help us and help me praise God to see take heed to his instructions and don't take it lightly don't mm -hmm. complain don't grumble like the children the children of Israel did the ones that was lost mm -hmm. but to do like Joshua and Caleb go and possess our land and that's as mm -hmm. Pastor Don said that's all I have to say for now God bless <laughs> you all and I love you <laughs> Amen. Amen. Thank you for that, Myra. And I, I receive it, you know, and, 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 um, I, <laughs> you know, it's hard to say you're, to say you're humble. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, it's like, it's almost like you don't need to say it when you are. <laughs> and I don't mean to say, you know what I mean? Y'all know what I mean. But it's, it's, it's honoring. It is such an honor for me um, to, for, you know, for you to say such words like that, because, you know, in the sense that I, again, I, I have to be able to stand and receive what God says and receive, you know, the kindness of you all. And, um, you know, I, I, I do, I do. And I thank the Lord for it because it is, again, just the, it, mm. it solidifies mm -hmm. so much of my journey, yes. you know, um, and how it, how it has affected other people is it really is such an honor. But every time I think of it, all I do, you know, it's like I picture, I constantly, it's like my mind takes me right back to the feet of Jesus. And I said, you know, that, um, being a leader that, it, you 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 follow me as I follow him you know I, he has given me the strength and the boldness and continues to strengthen me and continues to give me the boldness to know that I will must lead but that it is not myself <laughs> I am only walking out what he has what he has instructed and um you know the the thing the beautiful thing about that is that we are all on that same journey. So it's just as what he has done for me, remember that there is a trickle down effect of an anointing like that. Yes. And so if you are here mm -hmm. and you are part of that same legacy, you're Amen. part of that same anointing. Mm -hmm. And, um, and it's just, it's a, it's a, 
It's a wonderful thing and it's a freeing thing because yes. even as a leader, I know it's not all it's not all on me. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Who knows where we would be if it was just me? <laughs> hey, hey try. Yeah. I, I know that I know Natalie's getting ready to come on. Oh. But but the the comparison, Moses, watch this. Remember when God faced uh our uh no no when uh uh Jeffro mm -hmm. says Moses, you can't do all of this by yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, it's almost like I I see the Lord saying to Jacinta, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you cannot handle all of this by yourself. Mm -hmm. That's why you got to expand mm -hmm. the accelerate tribe call, mm -hmm. the accelerate mm -hmm. tribe. That's why you can't just make Don German your special case, and <laughs> uh, you know you got to let other people in and. Donna, yeah. let him in. He'll be our, no, I'm, I'm not upset. <laughs> but praise the Lord. I tell you what, this, this is this is so awesome. This is so awesome because God has a work for us yes. to do. Mm -hmm. It's not it's not just to send His word, mm -hmm. but it's all of us. Mm -hmm. And and the same, you know, that God placed the same anointing He placed on Moses to those seventy that was called out to help. Moses, yeah, mm -hmm. come on, come mm -hmm. on, let's go right drive. We we in the right we in the right place. Glory mm -hmm. to God. And yeah. um, I just I just love uh uh Daddy Carlos saying taking care of his children. Man, mm -hmm. I, brother, it's all right with me. I'm telling you right now to God be glory. All Amen. right, Amen. I, that's all I can say. <laughs> yeah. that, at least for right now. Right, and Natalie, you were about to say something. Yeah, so hello everybody. Um, I don't even feel comfortable talking after that great um message that my <laughs> Miss Barbara gave, but um, but yeah, like one thing that Jane has said, it was so crazy. Like God is so funny. Um, so I usually don't wake up early. I, I'm like a late sleeper, and I'll like be hopping on the call like half asleep. But for some reason today, he woke me up and he had me take a walk, and like he had been calling me to prayer walks, and I'm not really. I told you I don't wake up early. And I don't walk really. So <laughs> you have me walk. And I was praying over my neighbor, you know, all the Halloween stuff. It's you know, it's a little crazy mm -hmm. out here. So, um, whatever. And I'm thinking, like, I hope my prayer is holding weight, whatever. And I'm telling you, I hear the God said, Well, sorry, my daughter has a toy and the it's Stu Stuart Little and it says silver lining, something like that. It sounded like that. And I was like, Oh, what is that? Like, what does that really mean? So I looked it up and it was like speaking to the situation I'm in silver lining, meaning like, you know, things may look bad, but you have to look for that one good thing out of the bad stuff. Mm -hmm. And, you know, right now things are like crazy with, in my life. I'm like, I'm like, things are supposed to be good right now. I hear all these prophetic words, but like, I don't see it in the natural, you know, it must be all in the spirit right now. Um, but, but so that gave me hope. And literally right after I heard that and I looked it up, Miss Jane was speaking on silver lining in mm -hmm. um, the through Paul's letter. She said that you're supposed to look through the silver lining, and and I you know that's something we hear, but we don't. I don't know about everybody else, but I don't always apply it. Where like when things go bad, I'm so quick to be like, "Oh, really, God? Like I was just praying for you, and you did, and then this went bad. Or I was just I was just worrying why are these people saying no to me, but." there's always good that comes from it. And then throughout the whole gospel, throughout the whole gospel, it's, it wasn't always peaches and cream. Like um, even when the, the disciples were with Jesus, they probably thought, oh, we're with God. Like, they're, you know, we're with the living son. There's nothing that could happen to us, but they still went through the storms. They still went through the battles. And, but the only difference is they had the Lord with them and he brought them through. Mm -hmm. And that's like us, like nothing we go through it's just such an epiphany I had today because that silver lining is so true and applicable applicable in our business. Mm -hmm. Like I'm telling you, I was th I was listening to all these people this weekend at the builder school, get acknowledgments, and I'm like, oh my God, you know, I didn't even, and I missed my my turn with my life. <laughs> and I'm like, God, I don't I need to make some money. I need to do some things. And he's like, you are. It just hasn't been mm -hmm. natural yet. You know, like hasn't been because we are breaking things in the spirit. We're, yes. you know, we're doing the work behind the scenes in the secret place. Mm -hmm. And 
Yeah. And it's not about the recognition, it's not about any of that. Cause the Lord, like you told, you were saying yesterday, like we're doing the work. So mm -hmm. yeah, I just want to say that. Praise God. Thank you, Jane. <laughs> Amen. 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 Yes. It's so true. And that's why, you know, you can't, because listen, here, here's the thing. God impressed upon me so much, like several times throughout in, in my journey, there'll be times where I'll be looking and like, Lord, what, what? else <laughs> what do you want me to do <laughs> because i don't get it <laughs> you know but then all of a sudden he'll connect another dot and he'll show me what is on the way and he'll you know there will be like now we said the the silver lining and somebody said does say yes and you know and 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 the thing about it is that I, I have to turn around and then repent because the time that I sat there and spent questioning you, Lord, like your word wasn't going to come to pass. Like we lose sight of the fact that there is his word is always working and his word is always alive. It's alive. So it doesn't not stop moving. And if we can just continue to remind ourselves of that and let us know that, you know, just like Jesus said, when we were going through the scripture about um, how he sent the 70 out and, and, you know, he was high five in them. And he then said, you know, thank you, Father, that you walked this, that you didn't reveal this any other way, but this way, you know, thank you, Lord, that it came this way. And that understand that that's what we're going to see when we see the natural happen. And Jesus was pointing to in that scripture, what was happening in the spirit while they were going out. Remember they were going out. They hadn't seen the fullness of even what they had preached come to pass yet. But Jesus was pointing to what was happening in the spirit while they were moving their feet, you know, and he was like, I'm so thankful that it played out this way. You know, it could not have happened any other way. And so we have to continue just to let remind ourselves that, man, I tell you what, when the natural begins to pour out, when you begin to see this and hold it in your hands, because you have, remember, that's the next step. The natural always has to follow the spirit. And so when, when you think about what you have accomplished in the spirit, and what that is actually going to play out when you get to hold this in your hands, you're going to say, Lord, I wouldn't have had it any other way. Thank you, because it played out absolutely perfectly, perfectly. I couldn't have even put this together this way. Because it's not going to be our works. It's going to be his spirit. It's going to be divine supernatural favor there's it's going to be over and above anything you could imagine so no his word is it doesn't cannot return void and so the enemy wants to try to make us waste time thinking it will it will not come back and every one of those minutes every one of those minutes he owes us back and we will see it come back as we rejoice and we rebuild and we are established in peace in our land. So yes, amen, amen. I am excited. And Don, you know, you said something. 